pretty much every year on the junior search you get a question uh, to do with rectangles. And a big tip I would give you about rectangles is um, <clears throat> if they're talking about, well, they're only ever really talking about one of two things, area or perimeter. And if they're talking about perimeter, for example, you'd write down the perimeter formula first and make that into an equation. Uh, and then that usually starts you off in solving the problem. If they're talking about area, write down the area formula as an equation. So you'll see what I mean in this question. Um, let's have a quick read. So it says, a rectangular site with one side facing a road is to be fenced off. The side facing the road, which does not require fencing, is L meters in length. So this one here, no fencing. The sides perpendicular to the road are X meters in length. So these two. And then the length of fencing that will be used to enclose the rest of the site is 140 meters. So I take it they mean by that is that these three sides here are enclosed by fencing which is 140 meters in, in length. So that sounds a little bit like perimeter. It's not the total perimeter, but it's, it's that general idea. So it says here, write an expression in terms of x for the length of the side facing the road. So first thing I would do there, because they've kind of, they're, they're kind of talking about perimeter, I would kind of work out what the formula would be for getting 140 meters. You'd say 2 times x plus 1 times l would give you 140. So that's your starting off point. You write that equation out. 140 equals l plus 2x. And from there you can kind of figure it out. You know you want to get l in terms of x. What that means you want to get l on its own and on the other side of the equation you want to have an, an expression in x. So all you really have to do is bring the 2x across here, becomes 140 minus 2x, and you've expressed L in terms of x. The length is 140 minus 2x. Now part B tells us that to, to show that the area of the site in meter squared is minus 2x squared plus 140x. So this time we're talking about area. As I said, once I see that, I just write down the formula as an equation. So area equals length by width. And if I want to show what the area is, I need to find out what the length and the width is. Now you might say the length is L, but we've already found out that L is the same as 140 minus 2x. So rather than writing in L for L, we write in 140 minus 2x, and the width would be x. So if we multiply them out, we happen to get 140x minus 2x squared, and if we reorder them and put the minus 2x squared first, then we get exactly the same term as they were asking about here. So we've shown that the area is equal to this. Okay, so let's move on to part two. Um, let f be the function fx goes to minus 2x squared plus 140x. So you see that's the same as the formula we just worked out for the area. So really this function is about area. Now, evaluate fx when x is equal to 0, 10, 20, 30, and so on. So that's quite unusual. Normally, it's the values of x have only a difference of 1 between them, but in this question, they have a difference of 10. Um, so it says, hence, draw the graph of f for 0 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 70, where x is an element of the set of real numbers. So we have to draw a graph of this, but... The x values here are not 0, 1, 2, 3, they're 0, 10, 20, 30, and so on. So the first thing we do is we draw our table here. Um, here we'll have the x values, 0 up to 70, and at the end we'll have our y values, and in here we have the formula, so minus 2x squared plus 140x. So we fill in the x values in for x, and we work out what the y value is. That gives us all of these points. So the first point would be 0, 0, so that would be here. Second point would be 10, 1,200. That would be here. Uh, and so on, right? So a lot of people got a little bit confused by this when this came up that particular year because the numbers were so high. Um, normally, you wouldn't see such high numbers in these kind of questions, but, of course, it's a possibility as it is here. So you, you don't really... You shouldn't expect a question to be totally similar to the questions you've seen before. You've got to be confident 
that you're doing the question right, that you're putting in the x value into the formula and you're working it out properly. Uh, and you can always double check this if you have a Casio calculator, you can actually key in the formula into the calculator. Um, now, so if you want to draw the graph out, you should remember to put in all the points, of course, join up the points, most people know that. But remember also to label it. So we label the graph fx, uh, we label the y-axis and the x-axis. And this is really the most important thing, to label what the y-axis and x-axis stand for. So here the, the function itself is, remember we said the function is to work out what the area is. So that's what the function is about. That, that always goes on the y-axis. And then the, and the x value, of course, is the x, the width of the, of the field, so we call that the width. Now, the reason I say it's very important to label the x and the y axis is because usually the questions that follow are based on an interpretation of what the graph means. So if you don't know what the y axis stands for or what the x axis stands for, then it's kind of tricky to answer these questions almost impossible, I'd say, to answer this question. So the first question here says, use your graph from part B to estimate the maximum possible area of the site. So where is the area at its most on the actual curve? That would be right at the top of it. If you go across to the y-axis, you see that the area is slightly over 2,400. Some people think it's 2,400, but between these two points here, there's a kind of small hill. So you really want to get right to the top of it and go across, which will make it slightly above 2,400. So remember, that's the area. So that's, that's why it's important to know what the y-axis stands for. So the maximum possible area is, we'd say, roughly 2,460. Now, the next question is particularly difficult if you don't know what these two guys stand for. So... The area of the site when the road frontage L is 30 meters long. You have to find the area of the site when the road frontage L is 30 meters long. So if you're not too, uh, too clued into the, the labels of this, you might just think, oh, well, let's just go to where it's 30 here, up to here, and across to here, and we find the area. But, of course, that would be the wrong interpretation because they're talking about the length of the field, not the width of the field. So you have to work out what the width of the field is when the length is 30 meters. And the way you do that is you go back to your answer from part one. Remember we said the length is equal to 140 minus 2x. So if we put the length equal to 30, we get this equation. We solve that equation. We eventually find out that x is 55. So when the length is 30, the width is 55. So what we actually have to do here is go to where the width is 55 here go up to the curve and across to find the area, which looks like it's 1600. Now that might be slightly out because I've drawn this very roughly, but this is the technique that you use. And I would also say whenever it says in the question, use your graph, not only to put the answer down here, but also to indicate it like I've indicated here with the, the green lines. So it just gives some indication here that you you're showing where you got this figure from. If you like these videos, please consider subscribing to my channel. I hope to upload more videos before the exam this week and we'll definitely be doing videos on the Leaving Cert next year. So subscribe and make sure not to miss out on those videos. Thank you.